hello friends now in this part of this tutorial we are going to talk about the code architecture of the embedded c this is very important before we start any language or any platform we need to understand that how the architecture is going to reform to design and develop your own application on top of it so if you are you are using going to use the embedded c you also need to understand what is the basic code architecture of the embedded c language system this is super loop software architecture now we are going to talk about that so before we start importantly what is the minimum requirement of an embedded system which is required to design and the software of it the super loop is for very very popular for that the super loop or endless loop is required because we have no operating system to return in the embedded system because right now we are talking about the embedded system which is which are bare metal system where our application is directly running on the microprocessor it is not interfacing through some operating system or intermediate runtime system because we don't need to return to an operating system we need to make it continuously running so that our application is written under a loop so until the power is removed our application keep looping until the system power is removed so as a basic system architecture so what is the minimum requirement we need to create that kind of embedded system that if we write our c program we will have a main function inside the main function we will initial initialize the basically all the hardware peripheral clocks and the, all the system peripherals which are included with the board according to, uh, with the microprocessor or microcontroller is going to be in it in this phase after this is the basically the phase which is taken care of by the operating system or the kernels of the linux or windows in our general pc but as we don't have any our operating system we need to do this thing here and these things are provided by the manufacturer of the board or the manufacturer of the microcontroller system after we initialize all the board peripherals now we are going to start our application as our application will be in the infinite loop so in this infinite loop we will keep it our functionality here in that case we don't ever return from this while loop means our code will not never come this location to execute if it is coming means there is some major issue has happened which is breaking this loop now let us look into this what is the strength and weakness of super loop architecture the super loop architecture is looks very simple right this makes it very easy to build debug and test and also maintain because super loops are very efficient because with minimum hardware resource we are going to able to start our application and also it is very very portable because if we see there is no special or specific thing which is written here for our code architecture so our code architecture will be platform independent so this code we can take it from the another board to one board to another board and we can run it there obviously the board in it will have the internal definitions which will has to be different from board to board but let us look if your system requires accurate timing for example you need to acquire data precisely every 2 millisecond then this framework will not provide the accuracy or flexibility you require also the basic super loop operates at full power normal operating mode at all times now if we see that if we start this loop it will not end there it will keep running so it is utilizing the power of the system con constantly it is not 
going for a sleep mode or any other mode there so that is on the d developer role to design that system to make it power efficient but that may not be necessary for all application or can have dramatic impact on system power consumption so in that way this is the basic architecture which is always used in the embedded systems